Hello? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, uh, open eyes, I agree with what Chris says. Uh, the 1660 Super or 1660 Ti, that's basically around the 1070 performance, and they'll probably cost around the same, just kind of like a half generation apart. So, yeah. How's my uh, audio, by the way? Let me know, because I'm a I actually have a lavalier mic <laughs> hanging right here. So, um... I don't know why it's not picking up sound as much as when I do like normal recording. For streaming, it's pretty quiet, so there's a big delay. Big delay in what? The sound? Uh-oh. Testing one, two, I'm gonna do some claps. Is it in sync? The audio sounds good, hit the mic. Audio sounds weird. So half the people are here, I'm gonna hit the mic. Or tap it. No, the chat is, oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So chat will always be delayed for whatever reason. I, I didn't set any specific delay, but um, it just comes a little bit later. So uh, that's normal. Okay, perfect. Yeah, rent around Seattle is still super expensive. Um, okay, sweet, 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 sweet. All right, so I'm gonna give it a few minutes to uh, for people to come and like, oh, I should tweet this out. But yeah, I'm gonna let people come join the stream for the next few minutes. So I'm just gonna hang out and chat with you all. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to tweet. Oh, I'm going to retweet a tweet that I already put out. Okay. Yes, this is the Staples Dexley, which is the kind of revision to the Hiken. Uh, and I've been using it for probably a year or a year and a half now. And I used to hike in for the last like two years prior to that. And I really like it. It is a very comfortable chair. And the technical mesh is like, it's, you know, it it's flexible. And uh, it has good lumbar support. You can adjust this thing down here. There's like a pillow back here. Dang, 35 second chat delay. I'm not sure if there's anything I can do to change that. Let me see. <sighs> Stream settings, delay, delay, delay. Yeah, so currently I have it set to no delay. So that's just YouTube's thing. I think it just has a built-in, uh, just like a default amount. Oh. And then I'm gonna play some music. Let me know if it's too loud, just because I don't want this to be like completely silent. Um... Dude, Stefan, thank you. Um, Stefan, by the way, is one of my high school classmates and I haven't talked to him for a really long time, but apparently he bought an autonomous desk and they sent him links like with videos on them and he recognized me from that, and then he hit me up on a stream today. So glad to see you in the chat, Stefan. Um, yeah, hope you're doing well, you and your your fam. You took everything off your Facebook, so I'm not sure like how you're doing in life, but hope everything is going well. Gym routine. Um, I think I work out like two to three times a week. I could probably up that, but um, just I mean I just do like full body for the most part. Okay, so what do you guys think of the lights though? Like when I was when I said I was obsessed with these, I wasn't lying. 
these have been in the works for a while now because uh, I'll go over it during the stream, but this is not the first iteration of it. I, I had some some mess up versions prior to this, but we'll go over all that in a little bit. Yeah, it is Stream Beats by Harris Heller. Um, I'm using Stream Beats because he has a really long playlist and I know it's free. Whereas in the previous streams, I was streaming from just some random SoundCloud accounts and there was copyrighted music in it. So it basically took away my monetization for the stream. Um, even though only some portions of it had it and I couldn't go in and edit every section that had the, uh, the copyright claim. So that was just annoying. So yeah, definitely for streams, gotta stick to 100% for sure copyright music, uh, copyright free music. If you gave me a 500 bucks, would I actually build you a PC? Uh, yeah, so I, I don't do the custom building for people. I, I mentioned in uh, the video that I did with the report card PC, just because there's too much demand. I think um, there's plenty of resources from my, my own channel, as well as people like Coalition Gaming, who's in the chat right now, and uh, all of our other uh, tech friends that, you know, show how to part hunt and build computers. So uh, just, Having to deal with the shipping and any warranties if something doesn't work when it gets to year end and stuff, I, I just don't have the infrastructure in place to handle that. Um, especially since YouTube is very part time for me, I, I can't deal with like having to troubleshoot people's issues if something goes wrong. So, um... Yeah, so I actually like NCS as well. Their stuff is a little bit more upbeat though, so for streaming background music, it might be a little too much. But for my benchmarking music, I've used NCS too. And I, I understand why now you guys are saying there's a delay because I'm seeing chat right away and you guys won't see it on the screen for a while. So it looks like I'm answering questions that nobody has typed yet, so. Yeah. Okay, maybe I will try to only answer questions from at least a minute ago, or the ones at the top of the screen, um, to, to make that work out better. But, um, okay, so I think I'm gonna get started with the stream now. It's been, uh, there's a hundred of you guys here, 104 actually, so thank you for joining. But, um, I just wanted to stream because I haven't streamed since like, I think July. Uh, but then I also didn't want to just do another part hunt stream because uh, part prices are kind of all over the place right now. But I recently built these tubes and they came out great and I wanted to do something on stream. And I haven't ever done any like building or like DIY crafts on stream yet. So I figured why not give it a shot for this one. Um, <laughs> do not listen to the bird on building a PC. That is correct. But... Yeah, so we're gonna go over building these uh, tube lights and what I'm gonna do also is because this is very much gonna be kind of like a tutorial, uh, I'm gonna treat this stream also like I'm recording the actual video. So um, I'm gonna edit it down so it's in a much more watchable format where it's gonna focus on that as opposed to everything else we're gonna talk about during the stream. So I just gotta keep in mind uh, to make it kind of like a video format as well. Um, but before we get to building the tube lights i gotta let you guys know why i'm so obsessed with them in the first place so whoops yep okay um so i posted this on twitter not too long ago but these are just some shots that i got with the tube lights after i like freshly built them um and i really like the effects that you can get from these tube lights i think they look super cool um also, I posted on Instagram. If you guys have Instagram um, and you didn't know that I had one, feel free to drop a follow because my Instagram following is like very small compared to like my YouTube or Twitter following. So I'm trying to get those numbers out. I haven't posted too many things. I posted like seven things, but I'm trying to post more. Um, I've been posting more as of recent, but yeah. So I do have an Instagram. Uh, I'm plugging myself right now. So uh, definitely check that out if you have not yet. But um, yeah. Everybody knows who Dave2D is, right? He's like my idol when it comes to uh, tech YouTube. 
and he's not even like a computer or PC tech YouTuber either. He's more of like a mobile phone laptop guy. But um, if you don't know who he is, uh, he's a super chill dude, makes high quality videos. But in his videos for the longest time now, I don't remember when he started showing these. Um, he had these two LED light bars in the background. And I remember when I saw that, I was so like intrigued by it and I had to know what it is because I just thought it looked really cool sitting in the background. So um, I I saw this and I found out these things are called IKEA Spance Lights. Um, so IKEA at one point in time sold these but they stopped in the American market. Um, they still do sell it in Australia. I'm in the Australian site right now. And um, they're basically just, you know, LED tube lights, but they're not uh, available for, you know, for people to buy in the US anymore. So I was really sad when I found that out because I, I kind of wanted some just because I thought they looked really cool. Um, so doing some research online, I found that uh, there's, a lot of companies that make these light bars, but um, one of the more popular ones is Quasar Science, and photographers and videographers use these. And when I found out about these, I got super excited until I went and looked at their actual like product. Because if you look at these, <laughs> like this price, it is five hundred dollars. Uh, that's for the two foot version too. For the four foot version, it's seven hundred and fifty dollars. So, yeah. Oh yeah, and then someone's saying two lights always remind them of Harris Heller. I think Harris also has to have those in his backgrounds as well. Um, but basically, what photographers and videographers use these for, um, or to get like cool lighting effects for the most part, you see them in music videos and um, and like cool cinematic shots like this. So I kind of wanted them to have to have in my background to just add more interest. Uh, to like my shots when I do my my talking head videos um, Let's see so obviously <laughs> uh, Here's they're on eBay as well But since they're sold out and they're pretty popular like people have marked them up to like 140 bucks. So they're really expensive um, But there are a lot of people who have written uh, or made video guides on YouTube on how to make these things uh, the only thing about them is uh, I actually went through the process and followed some of these tutorials and like for this one uh, For the versions that I don't like people usually work with these fluorescent tube protectors these just are plastic tube protectors that uh, protect Fluorescent lighting and you get these at Home Depot for really cheap. Uh, I think I have one oh, right here. So you can get these for um four bucks right so they're super cheap so if you wanted to do the diy version you could do it as cheap as four dollars for this tube then you would just need an led strip uh and then i think that's about it uh but if you look at this version though well this material is actually very if you can see it right here uh let me switch it back to the face cam this material it's very flexible it's soft so it's not ideal for if you want something that lasts like a really long time and the diameter is pretty small too versus if you look at these acrylic frosted tubes that I'm using these are uh, they're really thick walled and they're really hard too whereas this thing is just this is very soft um, but what most people usually do and I'm just telling you guys this because if you do want to build these you will probably look, find the same tutorials I have worked with um, People usually put these parchment paper uh, into the tubes to get the diffusion effect. Um, so this is what you use to like bake cookies on, <laughs> on like a cookie sheet. So a lot of tutorials go through that. But as you can see in this video, the LEDs are, they're very noticeable. Um, you can see the individual LEDs even when the tube lights are placed far away. And I think the effect that you really want to go for is like with these tubes where you can't see the individual LEDs. It just looks like one constant beam, right? Like a lightsaber almost. But I'll show you what this one looks like because this is the crappy version I made. This one probably cost like 10 bucks, but I quickly found out that it was not worth saving the money for.
Okay, so... So here's the cheap version with the USB battery bank, which I also found was not enough to power legit LED strips. But if I can get this thing to turn on... Yeah, so making the cheap version in this thing, which has really bad diffusion, you can see all the individual LEDs, and this just, I think, looks really bad compared to, like, the legit version. And it would be nowhere near as durable either, just because it's this kind of soft tube. So, just a heads up going the other route. But, why am I not signed in? Oh, I'm on, uh, I'm on Firefox right now. And uh, for streaming, it's always a good idea to use a browser that you don't normally use because so you don't dox yourself. Um, I've had in past streams before where like when I start typing something in, like my address might show up because that was a search I did or like if I'm looking at something on Amazon, it might show like a blip of my address on the side. So I, I use like a completely new browser that I don't use at all so that I don't actually dox myself. Um, but yeah, so... The tutorial that I actually followed um, is from this channel called Droy Media, and I made some modifications from this, but I want to give them a shout out because um, this is Adam from Droy Media, and this video um, gave me really good ideas for making these RGB versions. What he ended up doing was making non-RGB ones, and his method requires soldering. Um, and he uses slightly different end caps than me, but um, this was like the basis of what I did. So I want to give him a huge shout out there. And um, let's see. Okay, I gotta scroll back a little bit to read the chat. Sorry, I haven't been keeping up with chat. Hopefully, the hopefully Chris and everyone else has been talking uh, amongst themselves. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we should be having a land party uh, in the winter, probably more like January, February time frame. We had one uh, at the like end of summer, beginning of fall. Uh, I just need to edit it and it was a social distancing land party. So that would be an interesting video. Um, we took all the precautions, like wearing masks and all that. So uh, I just need to edit that video. But, um, okay, so, oh yeah, back to the, <laughs> the, the tubes. So I have all the materials that are used to make these uh, in the description below. And um, I actually wanna show you guys because I mentioned this Oh man, how, how cool does this look on stream? Hopefully it doesn't look lame. But yeah, so here's the light. Um, and I can just, with this RGB remote, with the typical remotes that come with like all RGB strips, I can change the color to like all these different colors. Okay, so the only thing about this is if you want to make these uh, these tubes I would recommend to make them if you're using it for photography or videography and not just because if you want to or not if you just want to like hang on the wall or have in the corner of your room for looks though unless you're okay with this right here which oh, I think red is the only color that really does this but as you can see there are you can see the individual LEDs when it's like a darker hue um, or, and in real life, when I look at it, this is what I see, right? Even when I'm looking at it in like the white version, I can still see individual um, LEDs, but you guys probably can't. You probably just see one stream of light, uh, of like white light. So just keep that in mind. If you do want to make these, um, I think they're better just for like photography and uh, videos and stuff, not necessarily to hang uh, on your wall because Unless you are okay with these individual LED like that you can see here. I don't really like the look of that, but I love the look of it on camera when it's like this. And it looks like I'm wielding a lightsaber, right? So um, that is just one thing I wanted to go over so that people don't build these and then blame me when they see the individual LEDs uh, after it's done and made. But um, oh no, it, it cannot be black. Um, oops. 
no, these cannot be black. Um, they can, it can only be colored. What's up with this one now? Okay. But, um, let's see. Um, so I'll go over the materials real quick and, and I'll go over the cost as well. There's something up with this ballast back here. I gotta change it because I'm using a different RGB connector for it. Give me one second. This one's gonna be stationary anyways. Okay, sorry about that. Um, oh, the f yeah, I can do a fade effect. Uh, let's see. Not that fade. How about this fade? Here, I'll put the fade effect on. Come on. But I need to slow it down. Yeah, so I'll keep the back ones fading between the different colors. Um, they share, the, they have like the same uh, IR signal, so the remote catches both of them when I when I use it. Um, let's see, so let's do fade. There we go. Yeah, so now it's just gonna transition between all the colors. Um, okay. How, uh... How much does it draw from the wall? That's a good question. Let me see. I actually do have it hooked up to the um, the, the watt meter, or actually here. It's like. Around 30 watts. Well, and uh, you can change the brightness as well, so I can make these a lot dimmer, and uh, that'll that'll help out with power consumption. Now it's at like four watts. Yeah, so I had it at pretty much max uh, max settings. So okay, let me. Okay, so uh, the materials, um, we have, th the most expensive part of this build is the acrylic tube because um, if you can find these local, then definitely do so. I had to buy mine from a company called Canal Plastic Center and they're located in New York. And the only thing about shipping these is because I, I wanted four foot tubes, they cost 48 bucks each. Um, actually, no, that was for the six foot and then they cut it. But, um, so what I got was two four foot tubes and then two, uh, two feet tubes. So a total of 12 feet and they shipped it in four foot boxes because that's the longest a single tube was. And it was $98 just for the acrylic, all the tubing all together. Um, and the shipping was like 40 bucks, right? So. If you can find a, a company that has frosted acrylic, uh, then you can save on shipping. And if you don't want like four foot long, but if you want like three foot or something, it also drives the price down quite a bit. I just really wanted the long ones so that if I stood them on the ground, uh, they can be seen in my videos in the background. But um, depending on what your uses are, you can get do whatever length. So, uh, so it's these tubes. And then a really important thing is the LED lighting. So you're gonna want to uh, pick very carefully what LEDs you're using. So um, LEDs come in different, uh, I guess, LEDs per meter, like their density. So the one that I use for these tubes is 60 LEDs per meter, which is roughly, wait, yeah, which is roughly 20 per foot. Um, a lot of the cheaper ones, like if we look on Amazon right here, I'll show you an example. We'll open these two up. 
the cheap 1999 one um this only has 300 leds across the and this is 10 meters so you only have 30 so there's one less led like if you skip every other one that's how dense it is and when you have that much spacing you're more you're gonna be more likely to see gaps uh in the tube as well as uh output less light so um here's what here's the exact one that i bought uh so this one a a 10 meter let's see yeah this is 10 meters so 10 meters will cover up to six feet so i used part of it for the four foot portion and i'm going to use the rest of it this is the remainder of it uh actually two of these are the remainder of it and i'm going to use on this one so um yeah definitely get at least 60 per meter they do have 144 per meter i'll show you what that looks like uh but these only come in one meter length so there's not gonna be long enough if you want a long tube but if you look at that there's way more leds uh per distance but because there's so many um you can't have them so, so many on the same strip otherwise you get voltage drop and uh the brightness won't be consistent so I think 60 per meter is going to cover you for like long distance uh, tube lights. So yeah, I, I, I would say definitely get frosted. You need the diffusion effect. Someone asked in the chat, um, any clear tube you want, you want frosted because when it's completely clear, the LEDs are going to be way more noticeable. Um, though I think if you get bright enough LEDs uh, or dense enough, for photography and uh, for, and videos, I think it'll all blend together uh, if you use completely clear and it'll probably be really bright, but this gives you the diffusion effect. Um, let's see. Can you call me Mr. Budget Nerd? Yes, you can, that's fine. Uh, some other materials are, are these dowels for four foot, uh, for a four foot dowel, this is a half, half inch diameter. Uh, see, like at Home Depot here, it only costs, it's not even two bucks. So I, for the remainder two that I'm going to make tonight, uh, this was a four foot one that I cut uh, in half. And yeah, so these are super cheap. And then some screws, uh, I use number sixes so that it's not too big to split the wood. Uh, and then these end caps as well, which are, uh, I think five bucks for a pack of four on Amazon. I have them linked in the description, but these are just to put on the end. So that stuff doesn't fall out and so that you have nice soft ends and you're not scratching stuff up but uh, i think that's that's about it for the materials uh, i think i'm gonna start making one now okay so you're you are gonna need some tool i just bopped the, <laughs> the mic with my head but um so the first thing i'm gonna do is drill the holes into the dowel because um we're gonna need to screw it into the end cap so that the dowel stays completely centered inside of the tube so for a number six screw which i bought from ace hardware for like 10 cents a piece uh you're gonna need a i believe the pilot hole for it is 330 seconds for soft wood so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a center punch in this right in the middle so that I can get a nice straight drill alignment. But yeah, just put a hole right there in the middle with my pen because the wood is soft enough. That was not centered, but good enough. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm just gonna drill now. Hopefully the drill's not too loud. Oh, that was so off-centered. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, I think I might have messed that up a little bit. Look at that. Don't do, don't be like me. Don't, come on, focus. Don't drill a hole that off-centered. My goodness, that was bad. Okay, I'm gonna, All 
Okay, this one much better. This is much better. Much more centered. Okay. So now you're gonna need to take the two LED strips. Can no okay, so someone asked in the chat, can you chain the lights together? Um for these ones because it's the the density is pretty high. Um you don't want to go over five meters, which is why when you buy a 10 meter kit, they split it in half. You don't want to exceed five meters uh, when you're working with 60 LEDs per meter because that would be too many LEDs um, for uh, for the, your power adapter to support. So um, the way that I'm going to do this because I, I couldn't use one strip. One strip uh, of five meters only reaches three feet. So I had to double them up uh, so that it was twice as thick uh, and then swirl them around this, um, the dowel. So I will show you that right now. So let me unwind this. Yeah, so when I made the four foot version, if I just used a single LED strip, I wouldn't have reached the end of it. And then I would have had to run them in series or chain them together, which is what you're not supposed to do if you want consistent lighting. Um, but yeah, so just going with only one of these around would not have been long enough. And this isn't gonna be long enough either if I only did, uh, at least I don't think it's gonna be long enough, if I just do one around right now. So I'm gonna do two of them at the same time. And I wish this would focus, but I have it set to autofocus on faces right now. Okay, so this is going to be the end, that end. Okay, so I'm going to start it on this end. So let me get this started on here. And all LED strips that you buy on Amazon, um, because they're meant to be used like under your desk and behind TVs and stuff, they all will come with this. Um, Kind of like sticky backing, like adhesive. I just need to get this off. If I can, come on. Here we go. Yeah. So, if you're doing shorter ones, then you can get away with only one strip, but I'm doing two. So, we're gonna put two of them on here at the same time. The only thing is that you have to get it at the right angle. So let me see if I can get this started. Yep, so we're putting two of the strips side by side, lining up the LEDs. And uh, you gotta get it at the right angle so that you don't overlap. So let me try to get that going. But can I get these beats that are playing in the background? Yeah, um, can someone link Harris Heller's stream beats? I'm just going through the entire playlist. I should have linked that in the description beforehand. I need to make sure to do that after uh, after the stream. Yeah, getting this angle is a little bit tough to begin with, but once you have it. Come on. I'm struggling here. <laughs> Cause I'm trying to get it to be perfectly parallel. Oh, here we go. Rolling down. Without any overlapping or, and without any gapping either. Any, yeah. Here we go. So yeah, so this is what it's, it ends up looking like. So 
There's no overlapping in the strips as well as... Come on. Focus. Don't focus on my face. Focus on here. Where did you get the clear tubes? Uh, it's in the description as well, but a, a company called Canal Plastics. I mentioned earlier, definitely look for a local area like or a local company to you. See if there's any like plastic companies nearby that you can pick it up and save on the shipping. Because uh, I paid two, one third of the price in shipping. It was 140 something dollars and uh, 40 something dollars was shipping, so. Okay. And as you'll see, the adhesive with these RGB strips are never that great, especially if we're winding it around a tight radius like this. Because it wants like a flat surface, but um, we're not giving it a flat surface. So it's gonna fall off, but that's okay because um, actually I'll do it now. So this is something that I decided to do uh, as opposed to, I don't think the tutorial really mentioned how to deal with this from Joy Media, but I initially wanted to heat, heat shrink it or use some uh, heat shrink tube, but uh, I couldn't find where mine was. I have a case of it, but it's somewhere, but that's okay. Cause we're gonna just use zip ties. Um, or isn't this what the the Verge PC build called uh, tweezers? But uh, yeah, we're, no, we're just gonna use zip ties because I don't trust adhesive long-term anyways. Like over time, especially with the heat of the LEDs, the adhesive will probably give, and then this is gonna like undo itself. And being inside the tube, that's gonna be very annoying to try to like figure it out. So all I do is uh, is zip tie it real good, like so. So then it'll hold it, and then I use a pair of pliers just to pull it more. Man, my focus game is so bad right now. I apologize for this. But I can't, I, I can't change the settings now midstream. <laughs> At least I don't think I can. But yeah, uh, the only thing about this is when you put the zip tie on, do not put it over any of the LEDs. Make it go between the LEDs like so. Because, yeah, there we go. So you see how I got it diagonally there so that it does not go over any of the LEDs because you don't want to damage them but you also don't want to cover it because then there's that might be a problem when it comes to like heat output so Chris from Coalition Gaming says he adds bits of double-sided Gorilla Tape to every RGB strip yeah so I've installed RGB strips under like my tables and stuff before it always eventually falls off. So you want to use something better than what these strips come with. I don't, is this 3M? It is 3M, but I, I don't know. Like, oh, because um, these LEDs do heat up and get warm, it it's gonna make it fail earlier over time. So you, you want to use something better than what they include. But this is pretty much most of the process. Like this is the most time consuming part. Afterwards, um, I'll have it in the tube and done in no time. So, um, hot glue also works pretty well because it, uh, it requires a lot of heat to soften and melt, but it, it's basically like a hard plastic once you, once you get it on there. Like the LEDs shouldn't melt hot glue. Uh, let's see. So I, um, who recommended tape? So, uh, Herb Fedlian. So I actually did use electrical tape uh, initially, but then uh, when I needed to undo it to remove something, I had to take it off and it left sticky residue. And I wasn't trying to deal with that. Um, just plus, I, I think I would trust uh, zip ties in the long term more than I would electrical tape because most of the electrical tape, the stuff that I buy from Harbor Freight, maybe it's because it's like low quality stuff. Um, over time, it, it loses its stickiness. So, 
once we get both ends uh, tied up, it doesn't matter if all this adhesive down the entire strip fails because it's going to be held in place by the zip ties uh, and it's going to keep that tension on it to keep it wrapped and not falling apart. So. Oh, herb fed <laughs> herb fed lion. Okay, got it. I was reading it kind of like Philion. If you guys know who that is on YouTube, I was like herb herb fed lion. <laughs> do uh do I play Among Us? Um, no, I haven't had a chance to play Among Us yet. We could have played it at the last land party, but we decided to play that other space. It was a more 3D space one instead. I forgot what it's called. Um, but it was, it's definitely nowhere near as popular as Among Us. There's a 3D, another 3D space game where you turn into a monster and, or a couple of people turn into monsters. It's kind of like Deceit, all kind of similar style games. Try to figure out who the bad guy is. Okay, um, Cruz, I will give you a rundown on what the project is. It's basically making these LED light tubes. Just building them on stream because uh, I feel like it, but yeah. Because I think they're really cool and uh, when I posted pictures of these, I had uh, a number of people ask if I was going to do like a, a video on it. And I didn't want to make a whole video on it. Um, and I figured I could just stream it and then cut it down into a shorter video if people want to see that. But it was just a chance for me to stream for the most part. Oh, um, yeah, if you have to go, then the tutorial will be, uh, I'm going to cut the video down to length with all the main parts so people can see what goes into making these, but it's actually very simple. So yeah, if you have to go, don't worry about it. Um, I will, this will be available afterwards as well. Uh, and let me see. Okay. So hello to everyone else who has joined the stream. Um, Hey, what up, Forrest, a.k.a. Ohanzi? Thanks for the donation, man. I appreciate it. Okay, let's see. Among Us is a fad? Uh, maybe. I mean, I know there's like the Murder in Salem or whatever game as well. Yeah, there's a bunch of murder mystery games, but um, yeah, streamers, I would say, did make it popular because it's been around for a few years and no one cared about it a few years ago. So we'll see how long it lasts. Um, like is Fall Guys still pretty popular right now or are streamers not playing that anymore? Because if so, then that would have been a pretty quick, uh, pretty quick drop. Okay, so I'm gonna have a little bit of strip left over. All right, so we're about done with this, which is the majority of the work that we have to do. Yeah, so I'll give you another close-up look here. Yeah, so this is the LED strip, just no gaps in between and no overlapping at all. So I'm almost done here, then I just gotta cut it, which I just realized I don't have any scissors. So, I'm gonna have to use a box cutter and not cut myself. Okay. Somehow these did not line up. I think I goofed, but that's okay. So now, once you get to the very end, you're gonna wanna cut alongside, like, these LED strips, all, they always have these little uh, scissor mark, uh, little diagrams on here if I had better lighting. Yeah, you see where these gold strips are? We just have to cut along those lines. Um, so just pray for me that I don't cut my finger. <laughs> there we go. So here's one strip gone. I'm cutting it in the air right now because I don't have a cutting board or anything to stick underneath it. And I did not prepare I forgot about this part. <laughs> okay. So now we're done with this end. So I'm just going to wrap it up. 
and then zip tie it off and then it will be done and I'm gonna plug it in and show you what it looks like without the tube what are the tube lights for honestly they're just to look cool <laughs> um, they're they're used for I don't know lighting up if you wanted to uh, I can actually use it as just like a main light like if I wanted to I could just set this to white and then um, place it like behind my camera or something to light myself with it could be used like as a key light it could be used as background lighting it could be used for a lot of stuff it, it just looks more unique than uh, typical bulbs so let me get this going here all right, so I'm gonna cut this and uh... now, oh, I gotta cut this end off as well. All right, so we have it tightened now. I'm not worried about any of the LEDs falling off. I'm gonna plug it in this now oh, I gotta plug this in Okay. How much does this cost in total? Oh yeah, no problem, G Tech. Um, so for mine, because I got the four foot versions, the total project is going to end up being a little bit over two hundred dollars, uh, and that's mostly because the acrylic tubes themselves cost one hundred forty dollars. I have two four foot sections and two two foot sections uh and the shipping kind of killed me shipping was 40 dollars alone if you buy from canal plastics then you can get uh and you want like three foot or shorter sections the shipping will be a lot cheaper they even say on the website like if you go for four foot or longer it's more expensive um but also if you can find a local shop that has that sells plastics that home depot and stuff doesn't have this you would have to be like a specialty plastic shop if you can find it from them, it'll be a lot cheaper as well because you'll save on shipping. But it's roughly 140 for the tubes, about 50 for the LEDs, and then like a dollar here or there for things like these caps that I put on the end, two dollars for dowels, just miscellaneous stuff. So it's around 200 ish dollars, um, which works out to like 60 each of the long tubes and then maybe 40 for the shorter ones. But okay, so let me turn this on now. Whoops. I gotta like cover the <laughs> okay so here this is what it looks like without the frosted let me turn up the brightness yeah but you can see all the individual LEDs okay so now all we do is slide this over it as you can see for the most part, unless you are focused in on it, you can see the LEDs here, but as soon as you get some distance and especially once it starts like focusing on my face and not the light, then it just becomes like a tube. And uh, here, let me change the color to green. And then you can kind of control all the different, you want it to be purple or this is more purple right here. Yeah, you would need, oops. <laughs> When it's against like a white wall or something, it's more noticeable, the different colors. But that's what that's gonna be um, any any tube light you make. It's gonna be mostly white when uh, when it's being shown very brightly through the camera. But yeah, so this is purple right here. Focus on my face and then the LEDs go away. Come on. Okay. But um, yeah, so that that's about it. So now I'm gonna turn this off for for the time being. Um, 
So we have our pilot hole drilled here. I'm just gonna drill a hole into this cap right in the very center. This is just a PVC cap, about a dollar on Amazon. So I'm gonna drill a hole right in the very center. Okay, so now I have a hole there. And then just take your 10 cent screw or however much you bought it for, uh, number six screw, stick it in. And uh, got my ratcheting screwdriver from the latest ASMR build video. <laughs> The tube, that tube is worth more than my GPU. Well, maybe like, m how much is your GPU worth? Because um, one of these tubes, the six foot length is only $48. Okay, so now I gotta get this. See if I can do it. I should have tapped this beforehand, but I didn't. So we just gotta do it right now. So I'm gonna get this on here. Hopefully this should be going in straight. Okay. All right, so now that that is in all the way, just slide this in to cover this up. And we have capped it off. All right, so here's one end of it. Now the other end has the wires sticking out of it. And what I am actually doing is, um, for now, I'm not capping this bottom end yet. Uh, I'm just, because these caps are pretty soft, um, they they won't damage the wires when they're wrapped around it. So I just try to move these so that it's centered as much as possible. Like so. If I can get it centered. Come on. There we go. So to get it centered enough and then I can just cap it like this. And uh, because this is soft, it can flex around it without without damaging the wires. But that's it. All right, so we've made our first one. And um, here we go. So yeah, there it is. There's probably a better way to hide this. Like I could probably zip tie it, especially if I'm gonna use it in videos to, to hide it. Um, but I do need to attach these, R these RGB connectors don't stick too well, which kind of sucks because I might look into the connectors that clip onto each other. Or uh, for now, I'm just putting tape to paste them together. If I can find my roll of tape. But yeah. Um, oh, is this one not? Fading anymore? Fading. Okay. Yeah. Hey, thanks Gucci Mane for the uh, donation. Uh, okay. Yeah, so here is my third one. So I'm gonna have four total. I might build more of these. So one thing I didn't do, and I'm not sure if I want to maybe make addressable RGB ones. Um, I don't know if I want to buy any more of these plastic tubes because they're so expensive. But what I can do with this method now is, if I wanted to, I can just slide out the the dowel that I made uh, with regular RGB ones and then slip in one that I, I make with uh, addressable RGB. So I might do that in the future. Addressable RGB strips are a little bit more expensive. They're about like one and a half to two times 
as expensive as uh, these ones. Um, so I'm happy with single colors for the time being. But um, I'm just going to put this right here. We're just going to have RGB tubes sticking all over the place for now. Here, I'm going to put this like this. And then this is kind of what they're meant to be for, just to be shown in the background. But I'm going to start making the second one now. And uh, this time I will hang out with chat more. Um, oh, cover. Yeah, you could cover this with shrink tube as well. I think, so this is from a different um, RGB strip that I bought. Uh, it's, the white box is very noticeable, but I think like a black, just getting, if you are buying these RGB strips, try to find the ones with like the black controller boxes and the black um, adapters, just so that it's just less noticeable because once you put in a dark background, you won't be able to see this as much as if it was white, right? So yeah, so let me put that there. How long have you been streaming? Almost an hour now. Nice. Uh, th while I'm building this one, I should be able to be, uh, be more active in chat just because I'm not focusing on making it like a tutorial anymore now that it's already done. So what is the width? So the width of these, these are one and a half inch uh, tubes. So outer diameter is one and a half inch. Um, the ones from... Come on. What sums up with this adapter? Why are you doing this to me? Here. I'm going to switch this up real quick. Yeah, so those these tubes are uh, one and a half inch. And then the ones, if you want to make the really cheap ones from Home Depot, um, these ones are one inch and they cost $4 versus $40. So 10 time price difference, but hard plastic versus, I don't know, like thin, thin uh, plastic. What's a good build for the $1,000 to $1,200 range? I would say for that much, you should be able... Well, it's kind of... If we're talking about current uh, parts, um, you should be able to get like a 5700 XT or like a 2070 Super, as well as... Um, depending on how many bells and whistles you want, a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7 with, you know, the standard... Uh, should be able to fit a one terabyte SSD with that budget as well. But yeah, it depends on like what case you want, how many RGB fans, how many, uh, like all the special features. Cause that adds up really quickly. When I do builds, I typically go for the most part, unless it's like a, you know, a special ITX build or something I'm doing for the most part, I go for mostly the, uh, focusing the money on the CPU and the GPU because that's going to affect your gaming performance and streaming and things like that. Everything else, uh, I try to save money on. Like getting a case with fans that are already in there, things like that. Here we go. Okay. Would more parchment paper make it less, less visible? No, <laughs> it, it's visible. In real life, it will always be visible because this, I mean, if you look at this, oh, whoops. Because <laughs> if you look at this bar, I mean, this, this tube, it's way thicker than any parchment paper that you can stack up on itself. Like, look at, look at how thick the walls are on this, right? Uh, you probably can't, yeah. This is really, this is like the equivalent of wrapping, I don't know, five layers of parchment paper or six layers and you can still see the leds so like i said i wouldn't re totally recommend this just to have in your room for decorations as much as i would for video and photography reasons i can't move it because uh i'm putting them on the same strip for now 
Because I don't know what's up with this white box. This was from a different LED kit that I just already that I had on hand. Dang it. Come on. There we go. Yeah, I would say the 2600 pairs well with the 2700X. That would be something that I would not raise an eyebrow if I saw someone's build with that in it. What if, see, so the thing about Cyberpunk is, I think they're gonna optimize it pretty well. If it's anything like The Witcher, like it's gonna be able to run on like medium and hardware. Um, of course, you're gonna have to lower the settings to probably like medium or medium low for good performance. But yeah, with uh, a, a title like that, if they want more people to play it, they're gonna have to make it playable on lower end systems. I just lost a screw, so now I'm gonna probably step on it later if I can't find it. Dang it. I'm gonna actually um, tap this right now so that I don't have to worry about it later. Uh, 3600 with a 2080 for streaming. Yeah, if you use uh, N the uh, NBank encoder, I think the 3600 could also stream, like if you wanted to do um, soft or X26 or was it H264, but um, it's gonna run hot because I did the the stream test with the 3600, and you do get better performance uh, hopping over to NBank. But also, when it was on the CPU encoding, it was hitting like 80-something degrees. Uh, and it was fully loading out the CPU. So while it's doable, you're going to be pushing it to its limits. Uh, if you're, Especially if you're gaming uh, on a title that is pretty CPU intensive already. All right. So I'm gonna get the other LED ships out. Yeah, so I, I think I had like two feet of LED ship left over. This is unusable now because I've cut both ends of it. Hey, what's up, LL Junkie Scum for the win? Your CPU Ryzen 5 1400 bottlenecking your RX 5800 or five, not 5800, 580. The 1400, uh, I mean, I don't think it's that bad of a CPU. It just wasn't that popular because uh, for a little bit more, you could get two more cores and four more threads. But I, I mean, I wouldn't say it is a huge bottleneck on the 580. On some titles, it might be, but it, you would also uh, likely see bottlenecking on other CPUs as well, uh, assuming that it's not fully utilizing all the cores and the uh, like. The clock speed is what's limiting it. Hey, what's up, Pulsing Games? Thanks for the uh, the dono. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, the 1650, if that gets all the new... I thought those only were on the RTX cards. I actually didn't mess around with those too much. I, I mostly looked at the performance. Um, I know Epis Vox, Adam over there, he, um, he did a lot of the streaming stuff. But uh, with regards to the older hardware, uh, that I'm not sure. I think if we uh, Googled it real quick, though, it'll be like a really common question because the, the, the 
the new uh, features from that. Um, I think it's really cool. I just haven't even streamed or even needed a green screen, so um, I haven't really messed with it. What's up, it's Amit. Please stop spamming. <laughs> Um, 1660 or 1660 super well obviously you want the better card right but it, de it depends on the price point between the two so I think the point of the super cards were basically to take over uh, the non or the non TI cards at the same price point so you should technically want to go for the Super unless you're looking to use market and there's enough of a markdown on the 1660 To justify it, but if they're obviously if they're the same price get the super Uh, Kahlo Eduardo, are you a subscriber by chance or are you like just, they, did they recommend my stream, uh, out of nowhere, even though like to non-subscribers? If so, I think that would be like a first. I don't think YouTube has ever done that. They do that for my videos, but, um, I've never seen that happen on stream. Maybe YouTube is trying to step up their streaming game or like helping out their streaming creators because uh, they are definitely behind Twitch. Hey, what's up, Zachary Walters? Uh, you're new to the channel. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words, man. I appreciate it. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, is that Solomon? The Solomon that I actually know in real life? Please tell me that's not you, Sol. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, that's cool that they're recommending live streams. Maybe I should live stream more because people... A lot of creators think that live streaming on YouTube actually hurts their channels, but uh, we'll see. Um, I don't think it has hurt my channel in the past, but hopefully now it, it benefits it. Ugh. Dude, that hundred, I, I can't even right now because I don't even know how much YouTube, I think YouTube takes 50% of that, man. So, thanks for the donation, but I don't think I get all of that. Plus, I gotta pay taxes on it eventually. So, um, <laughs> if you can retract it, uh, feel free to. I won't, you know, I won't take offense or I won't be uh, hurt if you decide to take your money back. Because $100 is a lot. And um, I kind of feel bad, especially if you're like on a budget yourself and, you know, trying to save to build a computer. Definitely do not donate to me. As you should use that money for yourself. All I ask is that you support the channel, watch the videos, and, you know, spread the word. That's that's more than enough for me. But, dude, I appreciate that $100 dono. That is, I think, the biggest, one of the biggest donations. I can't say the biggest because I don't know for sure. And, uh... <laughs> well, I've always been a YouTube exclusive streamer. I, I've never streamed on Twitch. And, uh, I have no interest in, in doing so just because um my viewership would be way lower over there and i know it's good to diversify but oh i don't know i'm not doing this full time so you know it doesn't hurt for me to just stream over on youtube especially when making videos is my main thing and streaming is just kind of for fun oh uh, man you guys are spamming a lot today <laughs> 
how much am I saving by building my own RGB sticks? So if I want these, we went over the prices earlier on the stream, but I can't say that my sticks are equivalent to the Quasar LED uh, RGB sticks because theirs has, theirs are a little bit more fancy, but those cost $750 per four foot tube. It cost me about $60 to make this tube, right? So about, so 10% of the cost or even less than that. So yeah. Do I think putting a 10, 600 K and a 3070 would bottleneck? No, I don't think so. That, that would work out fine. Okay guys, I've said this before a lot, but um, bottlenecking is not the worst thing in the world. You will almost always have a bottleneck. You will never have a system where you're utilizing your CPU and GPU at the same time because of the way games are optimized. Some games use one more than the other and you just kind of want to get things in the ballpark of each other. You don't want to pair like a 3080 with a Ryzen 3, but you know, you have a wide range of processors you can use with like, let's say the 3080. You can go all the way down to like a Ryzen 5 and it won't be the worst thing in the world. So um, don't get too caught up on bottlenecking unless it's something obvious, like using a, a, a Pentium like G, what, 50, like a G4650 or whatever those older uh, Pentiums were, the Skylake ones with a new graphics card. Um, dude. Okay, so, uh, reviewing setups and things like that. Would people be interested in seeing that? Because I know a lot of channels are doing it now. Um, Jay's Two Cents, Bitwit, uh, among others. Uh, and it, if I were to do that, it would actually help me out because I could put out more videos without uh, stressing as much. Because I think doing those reactionary type of videos, um, they take less time than doing like complete build videos with benchmarks or uh, more in-depth topics. So if people are interested in that type of content, I could start doing it, but do you, like do people think that's already saturated in the space right now? Because I mean like uh, Ed from TechSource also does that. Um, And then would you want to see setups or more like builds or like what would you want to see me re uh, review or give my reaction to? Uh, Cause I'll definitely consider it. So you enjoy setup reactions. I think the way that I would approach it is um, I would only compliment the setup. So even if it was the worst setups, I would try to find nice, only nice things to say about it and offer like kind of more constructive criticism instead of like having it be like a roast. Cause I think that's what uh, like Kyle does or, and Jay, I guess uh, they do kind of like more roasty. I would be like the opposite of that, more complimentary, like no matter what. So hopefully the people who enter feel good about themselves after the fact, but um, yeah. Hey, thanks for the uh, the dono, uh, Savage Supreme or SVG Supreme. However you like to be known as. All right, so I'm at the end of this tube now. Setups and PCs combined. Okay, maybe I could do both in one video or switch it up every other video. Yeah, so stream, if I did it on streaming, that would be even easier because then I won't have to edit. Like editing is what takes me forever because I'm super picky. But on streams, it's just like, I just gotta go with it. And uh, you know, if I mess up, I mess up. But at, at the end of a two hour stream, I'm done. Except for this one. Or unless I wanna make like highlight videos. That's the nice thing about streaming. Um, you just turn on the camera, you do your thing for however long. And then once you're done, you don't have to think about it anymore as opposed to making videos where I, it takes me like a whole week just to do something that doesn't seem like it should take a week. With all the editing and all the effects and stuff. Okay. 
Okay. Should you try out WoW? Although I would only try WoW Classic. Yeah, WoW Classic's awesome. I'm playing. I'm not playing WoW Retail. I'm playing WoW Classic only, and uh, definitely worth it. Um, it is one of the most iconic games of all time for a reason. And uh, I'm actually still thoroughly enjoying it. A year later, it's been a whole year since I started playing WoW Classic, and I'm still playing it and still raiding weekly, twice a week. All right, so this is the second strip done. I got that on there. Use better knife safety than me. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. All right, got to zip tie this end off and then I'm done. Oh, what's, hey, Philip, I just realized when I checked earlier today, I put myself on invisible for some reason. And, um, cause I don't use Battle.net chat too much, but I, I'm definitely still on Battle.net. I need to turn myself back on. I was on invisible, um, for whatever reason. I'm not sure if I was like benchmarking, I didn't want chat messages to pop up or something like that, but yeah, I need to uh, to turn that back on. What PC? Oh, so let me show you my stream setup, which is like so messy right now, but uh, it's a new thing that I'm trying just because I didn't want to this is like a new set for streaming for me. So I'm actually streaming off a laptop. It's the it's the uh, MSI Bravo 15. And I also have a small screen on the side so I can see chat and monitor OBS. Here, let me move this and try to not disconnect it. So yeah, I'm, I'm monitoring OBS and everything over there. But this is just streaming straight off a laptop right now. My computer is over there. Right there. And um, because I needed this table today, and I didn't want to move all my stuff over here. Uh, I was like, this is a pretty simple stream. I don't have tons of effects. This laptop should be able to handle it, no problem. So, yeah. Do I think the 3900 XT at 460 is a deal or should we wait? Um, I think uh, the XT ones weren't really worth it, right? Uh, especially since I know the 3900 you said 460? Yeah, I think at Micro Center anyways, the 3900 is 400 bucks. And I could see that going even lower once the 5000 series comes out. But, um, I mean, if you need a PC right now, it, it's not a whole... That's about what the processor is worth. And you're probably not going to find one in the used market until 5000 releases. So you, the question is, do you need a PC right now? Or can you wait? It, I guess the, the if you can wait, that's always the best answer. But um, you don't want to just keep on waiting forever, right? All right. So T Reaper says you're being ignored, but I didn't see your question. What do you even ask? Answer, 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 answer. So you have an RTX 2060, 16 gigabytes, PSU 500 watt. If you upgrade the PSU... Mm, no, not necessarily. If you have a high quality PSU that can already run the 2060, um, unless you're trying to overclock and require more power, uh, if it's working in your system right now, you're not going to see that noticeable of a performance bump. You would like, I would recommend upgrading if you are having issues uh, due to kind of. I don't remember what the 2060 power draw is, but it depends on what CPU you're pairing it with too, what their combined is uh, and your total system. So no, power supply will not give noticeable gains. Uh, it will allow you to overclock more if you are at the limit of your power supply right now. But consider that putting a 3080 with a 39 or 3600 anyways, that pulled like 500 watts, I think. So your system might be pulling a lot less. So you, you might still have some headroom in your power supply. A 
Okay. Why the timestamps? Oh, um, I think I wanted the timestamps because it gives me an idea of how long ago people ask questions. Because sometimes chat is very quiet. And I have no idea if someone said something like 10 minutes ago or like two minutes ago. So the timestamps kind of help me out to see like how spaced apart pe what people are saying are. Um, so this one is done now. And this will be the final one if I can find it. The connector for it. I oh, know I think this this power adapter died because um, that was meant for a 30 LED per meter strip and not 60 like what I'm putting onto it. So I'm gonna have to connect this over here. Can I pay you to make me a custom or can you pay me to make you a custom PC? I do not make custom PCs for viewers or customers. Um, Unless it's like on a special case by case basis, mostly my friends and family members, just because I don't want to have to deal with warranties in case something goes wrong. And um, yeah, that's just way too much. Like, that's what like businesses that build custom PCs are for. Uh, it would be way too hard for me to try to do that on top of everything else I have to do. But but the XT is calling your name. Yeah, I mean you could get it. Um, I mean, I showcased a build with the 3900X recently, which um, I quoted at $400. Um, I mean, it's still going to be a good CPU for years to come. So if you need it right now, it wouldn't be the worst purchase in the world. But it, it's just kind of hard because we don't know all the performance numbers for the 5000 series yet, right? But what we've what we have always seen in the past is... When something brand new comes out, you can get more performance for the same amount of money. So here, here's the last tube. And there it is. So let me finish this up. And then I've been shooting for an hour and a half. I, I probably have to go around the two hour mark because it is close to dinner time. And Melissa is going to be waiting. I'm not, am I skipping people's comments? I feel like I'm not because I'm only actually hitting like one comment every five minutes or something. Okay, what was your question? Oh, hey. Uh, Twistable, you sent an email in regards to your motherboard. Do you need help completing your build? Um, I guess just, I would recommend, I don't understand what you're having trouble with that motherboard, uh, like what to connect where, because everything should be pretty standard with regards to all the power supply connections and CPU and GPU and stuff like that. You can watch any video and they'll have the same connectors as that motherboard, even though it's a different one. So, um, the, if you sent the email recently, I definitely haven't seen it cause I haven't checked my email this entire stream. So my light is on. I should probably turn that off. Okay. Thanks for the kind words, fun guy. Um, and thanks for attending the stream. I, I remember you used to do custom grip tape on boards, similar. No, I haven't done that. And what's, I wouldn't even try to do that now because um, cutting vinyl with, it's, it's really easy to see the imperfections doing it with a razor board, uh, a razor blade compared to grip tape. What I would do is just 
either get a vinyl cutter, which I have been considering because they're pretty cool, or um, just paying someone to like do a custom cut for me based on a design I send them. Because they'll be cheap. Uh, getting vinyl decals are like super cheap. So I don't think I would want to hand cut it. Um, it wouldn't be worth the time and effort. And it wouldn't come out as good as I would want it to either. Well, yeah, that's the unfortunate thing about the new launches of products that are really good. Um, people thought the 2000 series uh, RTX cards were going to go down in price, but the exact opposite happened because 3000 series was nowhere to be found. Um, so people who sold their 2080 Ti's off really early for like 500 bucks, they kind of lost out if they couldn't get a 3080 to replace it or like a or like something equivalent so sucks to be them where did i get those wow posters uh blizzard actually sold them a few years ago at their Bl official blizzard store they were limited time only so unfortunately you cannot get them anymore unless you buy them secondhand, which people sometimes sell on eBay for, they were originally 50 bucks, but people have been selling them sometimes on eBay for like hundreds of dollars. All right, I'm done. We have all of our tube lights completed and ready to go. Um, Where do I think you can find? <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. Um, where do you you think I can find a GeForce thirty ninety? Um, right now, nowhere. I'm not even sure what the inventory on those have been looking like. Yeah, I got to get more connectors. But there you have it. Let's, let me lay this one this way. Dang it. No, 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 no. Who's going to fall over? <laughs> What do I plan on using the RGB tubes for? Um, honestly, just to have in the background of my videos for now. Um, and maybe some photography stuff later on. Cause I'm since like this, I posted this on Twitter, but you can get some pretty cool shots with the tube lights. So, um, yeah, it's just for fun. And it, for videos, my next video will have a couple of these sitting in the background. Um, and I don't know. I just felt like I was really obsessed with these after seeing Dave2D have them in the background of his video. And I had to have them. So now that I've built them, I'm very glad I did because I think they look super cool. Like way cooler. Um, especially now that I have like the RGB version and like the thicker tubes. Your first time builder and looking at it, I just go clueless. Any video if I find, well, um, no, if you go to a Tech by Matt video, Twistable, look up Tech by Matt. He actually has, um, and Geekawatt too. They both have videos where they explain step by step and Joey Delgado. I'm trying to think of people who like in the videos, they walk you through every single like plugging in. Um, yeah, they actually like explain it. In my ASMR silent build videos, I don't really explain. I just kind of show. Uh, and that's the point of those. So definitely look up either TechRai Matt, Joey Delgado, or uh, Geekawatt. 
Andrew, uh, didn't you donate earlier? Thanks again if you did donate a second time. Sorry, uh, lots of chat going on. And um, how do I check all the, the donos? Let me see, because I want to properly thank you. Oh, I can't check it, can I? No, it doesn't let me go that far back in chat. Um, so I'll explain it again because some people might have missed it, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend these for LED lights on your wall. And the reason is, uh, and the reason is because in real life, when you look at it, you're going to see the individual bulbs. You see that? So unless you're okay with this look, like this look on your wall then i would not recommend it it's good for if you use it in like the background or to light subjects because you won't be able to notice it as much um i gotta trump the brightness on that but yeah i would not recommend using it um if you like want the lightsaber effect in real life like looking at it with your eyes through a camera lens, it make it looks so much better. Sorry, I just want to plug in the other one because when it has double the LEDs, yeah, it looks so, a lot better. So, yeah, when it's like back here and it's not the center of focus, then come on. Where did my screen go? There we go. Yeah, so I think it looks better for if you're using it with like a camera. Um, so I I do work out normally, uh, Chris, but it's because I built a home gym in my garage. So I don't go to the gym. Um, I just work out in my own garage. I have a, I have a power rack and uh, like barbells, dumbbells, things like that. No, uh, Justin, you can see the individual LEDs in real life. Like right now, as I'm looking at this tube right here, you guys on camera here, I'm going to put it to a solid white because that's like the brightest. Or even now, we'll do it to white. Oh, that's blue. So even right here, when you guys see look at this through the camera lens, you can't see the individual LEDs, but I can. Like I can see each of them. So... Um, the diffusion, it's still better than having a clear tube, but you, you'll you still see the LEDs. Wait, uh, Ur no, this is not a uh, Herman Miller or Ermin Miller or whatever. This is a, I, I think that's what you're referring to, the chair, right? Let's see. Do that is there a Herman Miller that looks like this? Ah, uh, probably. No, this is a Staples Di uh, Dexley, which costs like a hundred and thirty bucks, I think. Um, it's kind of like the Staples Hiking, but newer. Yeah, let me put the light on it. But yeah, th this is definitely not a, a Herman Miller chair because those are pretty expensive, aren't they? Let's see. Buy now. It's I'm just gonna look up a random mesh chair. I thought oh thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna lower the brightness as much as I can. Oh, there you go. Now you can kind of see it. But the way this is supposed to be used is uh with with both the connectors in. So let me do this. Stupid things keep coming off.
Yeah, so this is what it looks like at the minimum brightness. Which, I guess you still can't see the individual LEDs until I bring it a little bit closer to the camera. Or when one of the strips turns off. That's why I wrapped it in parallel so you get more LEDs. But, yeah, you can kind of see it now. But, there it is. This is the minimal brightness, by the way. So the further further from the focus you can have it, uh, the better if you want the lightsaber effect. Am I against racing gaming chairs? What are my thoughts on them? Um, I mean, I think the cool thing about racing chairs is that you can get it to match the color of your, your setup because they usually have like the accented colors on them. Um, and I don't find them particularly like uncomfortable. I just think they're usually overpriced. Like, if we went on Amazon right now, and we looked up gaming chair, because I think a typical gaming chair from a well-known company is what, three, four, five hundred bucks, right? And uh, I think you can go on AliExpress or something similar, and I mean, like, what makes those four, five hundred dollar gaming chairs that much different than this generic one on Amazon? That costs a hundred and thirty dollars. I'm not recommending this, by the way. I'm just saying, like, um, I think the initially when gaming chairs came out, it, it was kind of like a fad or like a popular thing where, uh, everyone liked the look of it. So companies were able to upcharge them, but now there's more and more companies coming out with chairs, uh, and they're kind of competing against each other and, and lowering the cost. Now this chair is probably, uh, crappier than some of the more expensive ones, but by how much do you think? I mean, it has the lumbar pillow, pretty similar design. How much better can you really make, uh, like a, what are the DX racing? Is that like the most well-known one now? How much better can you make those chairs compared to these at a third, a quarter of the price? I don't know. I've always been a fan of these mesh chairs though. So, um, I think the cushions on these ones over time, they'll give out because I'm assuming there's like foam in them or something. Whereas these mesh chairs, um, they're like polyester weaves and I've made, I'm not that heavy. I'm like 140 pounds. So I haven't like messed up and like left indentations in these chairs yet over like the three years I had the other staples chair. But that that's my thoughts on them. Um, I mean, they look cool. Like I like the green one. <laughs> that would be cool if I had a green setup. Where is it? Do they even have a green one here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like lime green though. Um, I do like it when it's like a darker green, but like for this one, 150 bucks, that's not too bad. Like this chair is 150. Um, okay, what else? Uh, I guess, yeah, ooh, I started at five. So I've been going for an hour and 40. Uh, I'll probably try to wrap up in the next 15 minutes or so. So we're just gonna hang out. And uh, let me, if you guys wanna like, just ask questions or look anything up, let me know. Um, the cushions last for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't ever bought a racing chair, so uh, I I don't know. But I just by looking at them, they, they look like... Because real racing chairs, like real bucket seats, they're not made of like soft foam that's like cushiony. Like they're made so that uh, when you sit in the seat, it holds you in place, especially if you're like driving and like taking hard turns and stuff. It keeps you in place because it's very like uh, curved in, right? It, it molds kind of to your body. These chairs don't really do that. Yes, Chris, yeah, so the, the mesh chairs, they last a long time. Like, the reason I bought these Staples mesh chairs is because um, on the Build a PC subreddit, they pop up all the time, and people who have been using them for years have stood by them, and uh, they, <laughs> when you fart, the fart goes through, and it doesn't absorb into the cushion for like 10 years straight. So from like a non disgust or from it being not disgusting, that's a benefit. Um, 
What is so if you're gonna use an LED strip for outside, um, Elijah, definitely look for waterproofing ones or ones with waterproof rating. When making uh, these LED tubes, try to get the lowest waterproof rating or no waterproof rating at all because uh, waterproofing is good for protecting the electronics, but it's bad for uh, heat dissipation because it has to be a little bit more insulated and this is already going to be stuck in this tube so it, it does get pretty warm like this tube is pretty warm right now um it's not like super hot to the touch but it does get warm so you want to help it out in terms of cooling as much as you can um lots of dust accumulates at the bottom through though for a mesh chair does dust not accumulate i so i have noticed that but do non-mesh chairs not accumulate dust at all? I guess not because dust for the most part only falls down. Hmm. I gotta check out some other chairs we have around the house, some that aren't mesh and see what that's about because I never really thought about that. But I have noticed that moving these land chairs or these chairs to land parties, uh, <laughs> like when I have to flip it upside down, there's dust underneath there. So yeah, um, these, I would imagine these are junk for bigger guys. Like, 300 pound capacity i wonder if there's any safety factor for that um 300 pounds with zero safety or with like a safety factor of one so that like if you go just slightly over it'll break okay do i have any recommendations for the best gaming laptops uh i'm not off the top of my head i would have to take a look but uh, in gaming laptops, I prioritize more on the GPU than the CPU. I would be okay with the more mid-ranged CPU and try to focus the budget on the uh, the GPU. But off the top of my head, I I don't know of a laptop like I don't I wouldn't recommend this Bravo fifteen because of how loud it it is. Hey Elijah, you get a shout out. Thank you for not spamming anymore. <laughs> Okay, uh, Able Druk. You're going to build your first PC soon and you're wondering what motherboard would be best with a i9. You're going to build your first PC soon and you're going to go with the 10 series Intel. Um, you don't want to wait for the new Ryzen chips coming out? <laughs> but, um,. Oh, those did go on sale recently though, right? The 10 series. Uh, they, they took a price cut. So I, I, I don't know what motherboard off the top of my head I would recommend. I would have to do a little bit of research. The only thing though is, I don't know if Intel motherboards suffer from this problem, but a lot of the AMD B450s and even some of the uh, B550 motherboards don't have the front USB-C connector header. So if you have a case with that and you don't have the header, then it's kind of annoying that you don't have that uh, the connection for it. So just be on the lookout for that. I'm not sure how the Intel boards are when it comes to that. But the AMD boards, I don't know why so many of them don't include it. Um, because so many cases these days do have the Type-C header. So you want to make use of it. Hey, what's up? Charles from Tech Always. How you doing, dude? I, I finished building all the tubes. Uh, I just need to make longer connectors so I can uh, daisy chain these. But um, yeah, they're done. Let me change the color of that one. Can I make, uh, see the Canadian everywhere except for the US market is a little different. So I can't really, it's hard for me to make videos about the different markets, but I can of course recommend channels like Timmy Joe Tech and um, David Does Hardware. Um, oh, no, it's not David Does Hardware. David Does Tech Stuff, sorry. Um, they're Canadian based channels. Who else is Canadian based? that does used hardware
No, no, no. Sorry. We were just talking about gaming chairs earlier. Uh, these are not good ones. I do not recommend these. I'm going to recommend this chair. Staples Deck Sleeve. It, yes, I should have changed it. So these go on sale a lot. I think, yeah, the MSRP is 250 bucks. This is the chair that I'm using right now. I used to have the uh, Staples Hiking. I wonder how much those go for right now. Those are a, li a little bit cheaper, but I like the Dexley more. It's a little bit wider and uh, yeah, you can tell by the pictures it's a little bit wider and it's it has like, doesn't have the silver trim on it. So it looks more sleek than this, but um, both chairs are great. They both go on sale for under 150 bucks all the time. Um, so th this is the chair that I like and use. Yeah, when was the last time Linus did a Scrapyard Wars? I'm not sure if uh, they have any more recent ones. And when they do those, I don't think they really talk about too much about like the different platforms you can go with and the different price points. They don't really do it like a Build Guys series. Um, I just realized I have not taken a sip of water this entire stream, and that's why my throat is killing me. I had my water here, but I have not taken any. After all this talking for almost two hours straight. Uh, I game at 1080p um, ultra wide. So that's 2560 by 1080. I, I definitely don't uh, game in 4K. And um, I think I'm going to look to upgrade to a 1440p ultra wide soon. Yes, Charles. More videos from Charles. No, <laughs> dude. My my water bottle promotion is for these thermal flasks, which is a kind of I I'm not sure if it's really a knockoff brand. Uh, but I think I heard that this company was started from like the wife or husband that divorced the other person that owned Hydro Flask or something like that. Don't quote me on it, but one of these flask companies was created as an offshoot after the people from the main company split up. And these are at Costco in two packs for like 30 bucks. So it's $15 for this huge thing that comes with a nice handle. And it has like a twisty spout with a big open mouth so you can fit ice cubes. Cause you can hear, I got ice cubes in there. But yeah, I think I just got too excited about water bottles there for a second. I do need to pick up a Linus one or an LTT one though, because to support the channel and get some merch in the process. But um, yeah, if you're on a budget, these are great options from Costco. All right, what is Zeddy asking? I'm sorry if I'm missing your questions because um, you have a 2070 Super, 16 gigabytes of RAM, okay, 97 gigabytes, and you get 200 FPS when you stream and game at the same time. What parts do you need to upgrade to get 360 FPS to run with the new 360 Hertz monitor? Um, well, let's see. What games are you playing? In that situation, it's kind of hard to say, but 360 FPS is a lot. I could imagine both the 9700F and 2070 Super bottlenecking. Or not even bottlenecking, they're just not enough to get you 360 FPS. So what you could do is lower the settings or even resolution because isn't if you're going for 360 FPS, I'm assuming you're playing like CSGO or Valorant or those games that require uh, like that high of FPS. And don't the pros typically turn down their settings and lower their resolution for those games? I don't think they're running at six, 360 FPS at like 1440p or 4K. I'm pretty sure they're not actually. So, um, I, I'm not sure what like a 3080 or a 3090 with like uh, a 10 700K would do for you, to be honest. I, yeah. 
come to think of it, I'm not sure, do many content creators focus on showing that higher frame rates and performance? I'm not sure if that's even covered that well. Uh, I would have to look into it a little bit more. But I answered your question, or at least I tried to the best of my ability. So I switched from a chair like those to the hike in life changing. Yes, Chris can vouch. <clears throat> Fortnite. Okay, so the thing about Fortnite is it runs like hot garbage on any system. If you ever try to track your 1% and 0.1% lows, even if you have the best system in the world, you're going to get frame drops down to like 30, 40 FPS. I got that on the um, using the 3080 uh, with the 3900X. Fortnite is just horrible when it comes to frame drops. So I wouldn't even try to get 360 consistent FPS there. For Counter-Strike and any shooting game, yeah, I thought people do run at lower resolutions or like minimum settings with some things turned on that help you out for like, um, I don't know, like smoke or things like that. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I actually don't play FPS games because I suck at them. So I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to them. $200 is a really good price for a 10700K. Uh, even though, you know, Intel is, everyone's kind of memeing on them right now, and AMD is kind of apparently going to take over uh, the best for gaming, I think Intel chips are still viable if they're going to be taking big price cuts like that. Ooh, okay, so let's see. Any upcoming plan for a... Uh, the next PC build. I actually have the next PC build already done. I can show you it right here. I actually tweeted about it. It's sitting right here. But um, it's going to be actually for a build competition, which is going to be really fun. And that should be out this Saturday. I think we're going to stagger our release dates. And um, I think my, my video will for sure be ready to go on Saturday. And I signed up for it. So we'll see. Sorry. Uh, excuse me. Oh, okay. Good to know. Tech always actually plays a ton of CS. So they do that to make player models wider. When they play 4x3, does that actually... Oh, I guess so. So when they play 4x3, it actually they're playing it stretch and not with the black bars on the side. So I was assuming they just play with the black bars, which wouldn't make it wider, right? Because you're assuming square pixels. But um, that's good to know. Huh. <laughs> 30, no, I don't think 32 gigabytes is needed yet. Um, I think uh, when I was streaming Death Stranding, which is pretty intense, uh, or any anything that I tested streaming with, uh, I never used more then uh, definitely did not exceed 16 gigabytes. I think if you're doing other things outside of gaming and streaming, then you would start considering more, but I think 16 is a good sweet spot at the moment. Though I do have to say 16 gigabytes is now what, like 60 bucks? You can get 32 gigabytes for like 120, 130 bucks pretty regularly. So, uh, I'm not sure if you want to wait for DDR5 to jump up to more capacity or if you want to just get it now, but um, I'm, I'm still perfectly happy with 16 gigabytes. I know in, in the latest build that I did, uh, I put in more, but it's just because that was kind of like a more like an all out system for me anyways, even though it came out like 1700 bucks. Um, but for the system that I'm using sitting right there still, that still has 16 gigabytes of RAM and uh, it's not an issue at all. Fall Guys, I cannot give you a PC for your birthday, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so the random PC giveaways that I do, uh, they're really random. It's just like, if I have a video idea, then it's gonna be someone's lucky day because I'll give it away. Um, but yeah, so many people ask for free PCs, I cannot fulfill all the requests.
That's that's interesting. I've never I've never watched too many pro like CS:GO matches, but um, are there videos that kind of explain everything that you guys are talking about here? Because I I actually find it really interesting. That's that's one area of gaming that I I never really got into, but um, <laughs> doing all these tricks like stretching, stretching it so you can get wider player models. But that makes everything else wider though. There's gotta be some science behind it. Okay, so I gotta start wrapping up the stream now, so I'm gonna end in a few minutes, but why Firefox? It's because it's not my main browser, so it doesn't have any of my private information already saved into it like Chrome does. Even though I think I think when you go into incognito mode, I swear it still has autofill and things like that. And um, yeah, so just for privacy reasons, I do Firefox for streaming, and I stick to that because none of my information, passwords, address, nothing can pop up accidentally and dox myself. The browser that I like using is Chrome, even though I should probably uh, look, I think there's probably better options from a privacy standpoint, you know, with the whole Google thing. But um, I've been using Chrome for so long now that it's kind of hard to switch away from it. Edge is surprisingly not too bad or the new, the new Edge anyways. Sometimes I just accidentally find myself using it because it pops up um, and it's actually pretty quick and snappy, but just Internet Explorer and Edge just always kind of got a lot of hate and are memed on. <laughs> Are you done? Um, so Craigslist ride along videos. I think I did one during the pandemic, but I just, I'm not picking up as many things locally anymore just because the market's kind of dried up due to shortages. Um, so prices aren't, are pretty high and it's not worth it. I'll still do Craigslist ride along videos if a deal comes along, but uh, I just haven't found anything uh, recently. Is this idea from Alpha Gaming? No, it was not from Alpha Gaming or Harris Heller, even though he does have some. It was the idea was from Dave Two D. Actually, got to give him the credit for that. Uh, my tech tuber idol, the person that I aspire to be. <laughs> Herb fed lion. I know it's kind of taboo, right? But uh. Yeah, it, it's kind of not that bad nowadays. Better battery life and you can import your Chrome pro profile. Ah. <laughs> I wonder, okay, let's look that up. Um, let's see. How, how would we ask the question? Like user percentage of browsers? Chrome is 40%. Uh, what's Chrome 85 and 84? I don't even know what those are. But Edge is, oh my goodness, 2.5%. But Chrome has most of the market share, followed by Safari, and then Internet Explorer Edge. Firefox, ooh, is not doing too good. <laughs> Oh yeah, Erpet, thank you for following me on Instagram. And just a quick plug. Okay, so I had 736 earlier. I plugged myself, let's see what the number goes up to. Oh my goodness, seven people followed me. All right, it kind of worked. <laughs> but yeah, uh, let's see. What do I do besides YouTube? I am a full-time engineer. I'm a structural engineer, so that's my full-time job. Uh, I was actually working earlier today, right up until the stream. So uh, I do that for 40 plus hours a week. And then I try to fit in as much YouTube as I can while still hanging out with Melissa and then friends and family and things like that, because there's not enough time in the day. I don't even have kids yet. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this once I have kids. You've watched Dave 2D's or who, that guy's, his keyboard reviews. I'm not sure if he did keyboard reviews before. He's mostly phones and laptops, but you might be talking about someone else. Um, uh, 
Posture check. Thank you. <laughs> Let me sit up nice and straight here. As we end the stream, um, all right, it's 7 o'clock. We've been going for two hours. I just want to thank everybody for coming to the stream. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. The first half of it was mostly me building and talking about these tubes because I'm obsessed with them. But um, then we just talked about whatever randomly. We didn't really do deal hunting this time around, but we did look at random chairs and things like that. I forgot how much I like streaming. Every time before I press record or start streaming, I get kind of anxious and butterflies in my stomach. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to do something dumb or be boring today. But um, I actually had a lot of fun. So I hope you all did too. Um, and yeah, I just want to thank everyone who came out and supported this stream while it was live. As well as people who will stop in later to watch it after the fact uh, on demand. But um, in terms of upcoming content... There should be a video this Saturday. It's a build competition video that I'm a part of, so that should be fun. You guys are going to have a lot of content coming up regarding this competition from eight channels, nine technically. So lots of stuff to consume. Um, but I'm going to go have dinner now and hang out with Melissa. Hopefully she's not uh, been bored waiting for me. But I will see you guys in the next video in the comment section uh, and on Twitter and Instagram and all that if you guys follow me over there. But I hope everyone has a great rest of your night or evening or day, where depending on where you guys are from. Um, and stay safe out there with the whole pandemic still going on. Uh, yes, I'm going to say it. Wear your masks. It's not political. It's just scientific and caring about others. So, yeah, you guys have a great one, and I'll see you next time. Bye.